interior of the earth in the previous class we discussed about the sources which provides us knowledge about the interior of the earth well today we are going to talk about the earthquake waves basically the three types of earthquake waves are normally recorded by a seismograph the seismograph is the device that measures the seismic waves so when we talk about the three types of earthquake waves firstly we have the p waves secondly s waves and thirdly the l waves firstly let us talk about the p waves p waves or the primary waves are the longitudinal waves their average velocity is 8 km per second which is higher than any other waves well p waves can travel through all the mediums including solid liquid and gases next s waves s waves or secondary waves are transverse like light waves their average velocity is 4 km per second they can travel through solids only and disappear in liquids thirdly l waves that is the long waves or also known as surface waves as it travels along the surface of the earth l waves can travel through all the mediums solid liquid and gases but at an average velocity of just three kilometer per second well p and s waves are called body waves because they can travel through the solid body of the earth whereas surface waves moves along the surface or the upper crust of the earth next behavior of the earthquake waves these waves behave in different way as they travel and pass through different mediums, be it solid, liquid or gas. All the three waves, P, S and L, are recorded near the focus of the earthquake. Well, P and S waves are recorded along the surface up to a distance of about 11,000 km from the focus of the earthquake. Their velocity also increases with the increase in depth but only up to a depth of 2,900 km. Beyond this depth, the S waves disappear and P waves travel with reduced velocity. As we know that, S waves disappear in liquid, so this shows that the core of the earth behaves like liquid, whereas mantle up to a depth of 2,900 km behaves like solid. On reaching the core, S waves disappear and P waves are refracted as a result of which there are no waves for a distance of 5000 km beyond the 11000 km mark. This area is known as shadow zone. Well, the presence of shadow zone on the surface of the earth shows that the earth's core is composed of heavy materials like nickel and iron whose density is 11 to 12. Well, normally, the shadow zone is found between 103 degree and 143 degree distance from the focus of the earthquake. Now, let us talk about the three main layers of the earth that is the crust, the mantle and the core. Firstly, let us talk about the Earth's crust, which is the outermost layer and is also the thinnest layer as compared to the other layers. Its average thickness is only 33 km. It is a solid layer composed of rocks. It is thicker below the mountains and thinner below the oceans. Here, the P waves travel at a velocity of about 6 km per second at the surface of the Earth and about 7 km per second at the base of the crust. Well, the crust is separated from the mantle by the abrupt change in the velocity of seismic rays. This happens basically due to the change in mineral composition or in the physical state of rocks. Well, the surface of sudden change in velocity which separates the crust from the mantle is known as the Mohorovic discontinuity or the Moho discontinuity or M discontinuity. This is named after the Yugoslavic seismologist Mohorovic who recognized this discontinuity. Next, the Earth's mantle. Below the Mohorovic discontinuity, 
is a very thick layer known as mantle. The velocity of both P and S waves increases throughout the mantle layer, but the velocity of P waves reduces and S waves terminate at the mantle core boundary about 2900 km below the surface. Thus, there is a plane of discontinuous surface between the mantle and the core. This is known as Gutenberg discontinuity. It is marked by the abrupt increase in density from 5.5 in the mantle to about 10.0 below this discontinuity. The mantle is subdivided into two major parts depending upon the behavior of the seismic waves. They are the upper mantle and the lower mantle. Well, the upper mantle extends from the crust to a depth of about 650 km. Its upper part up to a depth of about 300 to 400 km is known as asthenosphere. Rocks in the asthenosphere behave both as a plastic solid and as an elastic solid. The presence of the soft layer in upper mantle was suspected by Benno Gutenberg in 1926. He noticed that the velocities of the earthquake waves slowed down below 150 km. This zone is called the low velocity zone. Below the asthenosphere from 400 to 650 km is the transitional zone which separates upper mantle from the lower mantle. Next, the Earth's core. Study of seismogram has confirmed that there is a spherical core at the Earth's center. It was observed that there is a region on the globe opposite to the earthquake focus where S waves are not received. This means that S wave cannot pass the central part of the Earth. As S waves cannot pass through liquid, so this proves that the core of the Earth is liquid. At the boundary of the core, P waves are refracted and S waves disappear. As such, P and S waves are not received between 103 degree to 143 degree distance from the focus of the earthquake and consequently it is known as the shadow zone. After studying the extent of the shadow zone, it has been calculated that the earth's core has a radius of 3470 kilometers. Well, talking about the structure of the Earth's interior, the famous Austrian geologist Swiss has divided the Earth into three main layers. Firstly, Sial, number two, Sima, number three, Ninth. Firstly, let us talk about Sial. The uppermost layer is mainly composed of Silicon and aluminium, Si plus Al is known as Sial. Continents are mostly composed of lighter silica, having an average density of 2.75 to 2.90. Its maximum depth is 100 km. Next, let us talk about Sima. The second layer is mainly made up of silica and manganese. Si plus Ma is known as Sima. This layer has an average density of 2.90 to 4.75 and extends up to a depth of 2,900 km. Next, let us talk about knife. This layer is mainly made up of nickel and ferrous, Ni plus Fe and is named knife. Its density is 11 to 12. This layer extends from a depth of about 2,900 kilometers. 